it's been quite a while since we've been here me filming a vlog speaking to you uh why am i so awkward i'm so sorry hi this is my first time apparently i feel like it's been over three months since the last time that i did one of these things one of these vloggity vlog vlogs um <laughs> Hello my friends, how are you doing? I've missed you so so much Yes, I've been doing videos every week except for that one week. I'm still so sorry about that one But I've been doing videos. It's not like I've been completely gone, but I haven't done one of these You know catch up. How are we doing? What are we watching? What are we reading kind of vlogs and I kind of miss talking to you guys and I get the feeling that maybe you miss me too, just a tiny bit. I have seen some people asking me what I've been watching, what I've been reading, what animes I'm currently obsessed with. And it makes me really happy to know that people actually care about those things because mostly when I mention them, I'm like, who cares? <laughs> It's time to start a new reading vlog and I have so much planned for this vlog because I have to do some bookshelf reorganization. I've been gone for a while and before I left I received so many books and even when I came back I received even more books so I definitely need to figure out what I'm going to be doing, where I'm going to be putting those new books, and it's all going to happen in this vlog. So stay tuned for that. To start us off, I thought I would talk about the books that I'm currently in the middle of and some of my reading plans because I do have a 24-hour readathon this weekend with my Patreons. I have a whole TBR planned for that one. I have some horror manga that I'm saving for the AM hours, and I'm also going to be reading our Patreon pick of February and it's just going to be really exciting but before i can get to my 24-hour readathon i do have some other books that i'm currently in the middle of before i left on my trip to taiwan i was in the middle of reading if we were villains written by emil rio and unfortunately i did not take it with me the one book that i did take with me was the count of monte cristo and if you've seen the size of that baby you know that if you're taking that book you're not taking any other so unfortunately i did not take this book with me and it's just been sitting here gathering dust unfortunately I left my bookmark on page 103 I mean I've done a decent amount of annotating and I was really enjoying it before I abandoned it and ever since I've come back I haven't picked up this book like this is the first time that I'm touching this book ever since I've been back in my room in my country I'm not feeling the dark academia vibes anymore I'm in a very spring summery type of books kind of mood and unfortunately if we were villains does not fit that mood so I don't know if I should just DNF or if I should just push through and maybe once I try and pick it back up again I'll just be like oh I love this story how could I ever think of DNFing this like let's continue let's push through yeah <laughs> like I look at it and I was having so much fun when I was reading it I was loving the characters I was loving the story and the atmosphere and this whole mystery around why is this dude in prison for a crime that he did not commit what is the crime like what is going on I was really into the story I don't know what I'm going to be doing about this but I thought I would mention it to you guys and maybe you can tell me in the comments below if I should just push through or if I should wait until the mood strikes again and just put this on hold for the time being. If I'm being honest, there are just so many other books that I am way more excited to read at the moment. For example, Severance by Ling Ma. I got this book on my most recent unboxing, so if you haven't seen that one, I'll link it up here, but Severance by Ling Ma. It's been on my radar ever since Instagram hyped it up for me. So many people were posting about this book and talking about how incredible it is. When I was trying to read what this book was about, it basically compared it to The Office, which is one of my all-time favorite TV shows, and apparently there's also zombies, so like, immediately my brain was like i need to read this right now i need to throw my entire february tbr to the trash and just 
immediately pick this book up even though i haven't picked it up officially i do plan on starting this today because it just it keeps calling to me and it sounds like it's going to be this incredibly funny maybe even satirical journey and i'm really excited for it so why would i wait to start a book that i have a feeling i'm going to love you know what i mean i'm definitely going to be letting you guys know how i feel about it what it's actually about if it's really reminiscent of the office if there's maybe even a Dwight character or a Michael Scott character, I'll let you guys know every single thing and I am so very excited. Apart from Severance, there is another book that I haven't officially started but I'm itching to reread it because yes, I've read it before. I have this thing where I just reread it every year, like the whole trilogy, because I love those books so much. I love these characters. I love the story. I love rereading it. So that book is The Cruel Prince written by Holly Black. The first reason that I want to reread these books is because it's sort of just become a tradition at this point to read these books every year. And second of all, because I want to reread this trilogy before I start Holly Black's new duology, The Stolen Heir, in which we follow Jude's half-brother, Oak. Yes, I remembered his name this time around, okay? I am a true Cruel Prince fan. Don't come for me. I remembered his name. <laughs> the Cruel Prince is definitely on my reading plans. Will I start it? I mean, fingers crossed, yes. And in 2023, I want to have a more positive mindset towards myself. I realize that I'm constantly bringing myself down and just like underestimating my abilities. So for this year, I just want to be kinder to myself. And even if sometimes things feel a little bit impossible or it just looks like I won't be able to handle it, I just want to say, hey, maybe I can and maybe I will. Sorry about that random self love speech but <laughs> I just really want to try and believe in myself a little bit more and whenever I say I'm so excited to read this book I hope I can pick it up soon I really do mean it and maybe I will actually pick it up so yes apart from those three books I'm also in the middle of yeah listen okay I'm in the middle of a lot of books it's okay I've chosen this path in life and I am happy with it sometimes it's hard sometimes it's a burden I have to carry but hey, it's fun. You have to live with the consequences of your actions and my actions are starting a new book whenever I'm in the mood for it. I don't care how many other books I'm in the middle of. If I wanna start a book, I just start it and just, you know, I just, I, I live like this. <laughs> Apart from these three books, I am also in the middle of Love in the Time of Serial Killers. This is my February buddy read with my Patreons. And you know, the month is almost over and it's a little bit worrisome how I'm not even on chapter five. <laughs> I really need to prioritize Love in the Time of Serial Killers and just sit my butt down binge read this baby and see if i love it see if i hate it film a vlog for it you know the whole deal yeah i need to work on it and i'm going to be honest from the four chapters that i've read i don't really vibe with the main character i don't like her attitude i don't like her personality and i don't like her voice and since she is the narrator of the story i don't know how this is going to fare for the both of us. Like I might end up hating this book. I don't really love the fact that I'm not liking my Patreon buddy read, but hey, at least it's going to make for an entertaining reading vlog. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> That's basically all I had to update you guys on the reading front. Oh my God, wait. Yona, Yona of the Dawn. Of the Dawn. I'm still making my way through the manga. I am currently on volume 20. <sighs> The story just keeps getting better and better. It hurts that such an incredible story is not going to be animated ever again and my eyes won't ever have the honor of seeing such a beautiful story and such incredible characters on the screen. But hey, I'm really, really happy with the manga, so I think I'll survive. I still need to read volume 21, but it's incredible. It's amazing. Oh my God, Yona of the Dawn. It's incredible. I feel like I've said incredible a thousand times and I meant it every single time. So there we go. In terms of K-dramas and animes, I will be honest, I haven't been watching that many. I don't know why, I don't know what's gotten into me, but I've just been re-watching old shows. So I've been watching Friends, um, yes, the sitcom from like the 90s, or not 90s, it was more like 2000s. 
Yeah, I've been rewatching that because I've just been seeking a lot of comfort in my life and I basically grew up watching Friends with my family so I've just been watching old reruns of Friends and I'm also watching Hospital Playlist again for the third time I just keep going back to the shows that brought me a lot of comfort when I needed them the most so that's what I've been doing, but I did start a new anime apart from Chainsaw Man. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I finished Chainsaw Man, the anime. Oh my god, it was... Don't, like, I don't want to talk about it because... When is season two coming? I need it right now. I did start a new anime that's called Blue Lock, and oh my god, when I tell you that my blood pressure has never been higher. Like, oh my goodness, Blue Lock is one of the most intense stressful and intensely stressful animes i've ever seen but it's so damn good you never want to stop watching there are literally episodes where i feel like i'm going to have a heart attack because it's just so insane and so stressful but it's so fun blue lock is basically this sports anime and we're following a bunch of characters that are competing to become the best player in japan or basically in the world. It's extremely high stakes. They have to compete against each other, they have to play against each other, and basically there are no rules. It's so, <laughs> like, uh, I'm struggling to describe this because I feel like no matter how I explain it, it's not gonna do justice to how good this anime is. It's just incredible. Just watch it, okay? You're not going to regret it. It's incredible amazing characters and it's just a great time so i would highly recommend it <laughs> i'm also aware that there's been like this wave of new k-dramas coming out recently and i haven't started a single one but they're all on my radar like my watch list has never been longer and it's a little bit stressful because i have so many k-dramas that i want to watch but i don't have the time to spend a full complete hour watching an episode my time making skills are not the best at the moment so i think the k-drama front is going to be a little lacking for the time being now that i've told you how i've been and what i've been up to let me know in the comments below how you've been doing what are some new shows or some new books that you've been reading that you think i would like as well please let me know how you've been doing and what's up with you how's 2023 treating you i miss talking to you guys in the comments so please don't be afraid to reach out to me in the comments, talk to me about your 2023 resolutions, what are some books that you wanna read before the year ends. I did finish, I don't know if you saw the video yet, but I did finish reading The Count of Monte Cristo, which was on my 23 books to read in 2023. And I, like, wow, I'm really proud of myself because one, I finished The Count of Monte Cristo in less than a month, and two, I loved The Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, I forgot to talk to you guys about one show that I'm also currently watching. I started it this morning because I saw a YouTuber that I watch watching it, and it looked really intense, so I was like, hey, maybe I should give it a try. It's called Physical 100 and it's this Korean reality show where the strongest and the most agile, I guess, most physically gifted people go to compete against each other to see who is the strongest person in South Korea. Maybe, I guess. Once again, it's extremely intense, so stressful. Sometimes I even have to pause the episode because it's just bringing me so much anxiety. Yeah, but it's fun. It's a good time. I would, I would actually recommend it. Like, I didn't think I would enjoy it because it's just, you know, strong people exercising, basically. <laughs> But it's really fun. I, I'm actually having a good time. I'm currently on episode 5, so I think that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm gonna go finish episode 5, and then I should probably read. <laughs> like, I really don't want to. I just want to keep binging Physical 100. But as I mentioned, I do need to make some progress on love in the time of serial killers. So that's what I'm going to be spending my day with. I hope you're having a fantastic day whenever you're seeing this. I'm so happy to be vlogging again. So I hope you're happy to be here as well. If you're new here, I just wanted to welcome you to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy your stay and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>
I'm not even sure if I should vlog this, but I'm just so incredibly excited about what I'm working on right now that it's just, I don't want to let this moment go by without recording it because I want future Bella to know that even when you're at your most unmotivated and even when you're super sad and you think you're never going to get your mojo back and that you're just in this horribly ever-present darkness of creative block or creativity block i just want you to know you just have to push through i know it's the corniest advice but sometimes you just have to push through this isn't always the best approach sometimes you do need to rest and reset and just give yourself time to heal and breathe but in this instance i've been stuck in the biggest rut creatively personally emotionally physically today is the very first day that I feel like I can actually get out, like I can finally see an exit. And it's a little bit away, you know, I do have to do some walking, I do have to do some work to get to where I want to be, but the fact that I can see an exit to this feeling, I can't begin to explain how good it feels. And I'm editing a video, so that's why I look like this, sorry. But I'm editing my Monte Cristo vlog and I feel how I felt when I was editing my War and Peace vlog and I haven't felt like this about editing or about creating in general in the longest time. Like for a while now I've just been like okay I need to get a video up, I need to get a video up, I need to get a video up, whatever it is I just need to get it up. But with this one nobody's asking, well a lot of people are asking me to do this one but before I started editing, I was really hesitant about this vlog. I was like, oh, this isn't going to do as well. This, it's not going to appeal to so many people. You know, I went into it with a very negative mindset. And that's something that I try to never do. But sometimes my brain gets the best of me. You know, the, the brain goblins do their work too well. I started editing it and I was just like, oh my god. Somewhere between the beginning and now, it's like a switch has been turned on inside of me. And the excitement is all back. I'm trying. Like I have this really epic music in the background. And I'm collecting all of the clips that I have. And it's just bringing me so much joy and it's bringing me so much excitement that I don't even care how well this video does because I'm so proud of it and I'm so happy with how it's coming out and literally the excitement that I have to share this video with you guys is astronomical and I haven't felt that way in so long and if you're a creator, I feel like you know this feeling and you know how ephemeral it can be it, you know how hard it can be to feel this way so I'm just incredibly grateful to be feeling this way. I just feel like I'm slowly getting back to who I want to be and that's a very exciting feeling. So I just immediately took my camera up and I wanted to film this moment because if you're currently struggling with feeling unmotivated or feeling like you have no energy to do anything at all, I want you to look at me and you know, rely on me, lean on me, hear me when I tell you that I struggle too. Sometimes in my videos or my vlogs, I can seem like this easygoing person that never struggles, but like that's such an incredibly narrow mindset. Of course, I'm human too. I have my struggles, I have my limitations, I have my mental issues, but we're working through it. And I'm, I don't know, I just wanna say to future Bella who's editing this, and to whoever is watching this, if you somehow stumbled across this video, I just want to tell you that I am extremely proud of you for being here today. I know how hard it is to live, period. I know how hard it is to endure and survive, but you're here, you did it, and I am so incredibly proud of you, and I just wanted to let you know. Future Bella and you watching, I am proud of you, and you should be too. It's hard work. I'm not gonna come here and say like, hey, this is the easiest thing, like just because I've got the motivation now, and I've got the energy, and I've got the positive vibes, it doesn't mean somehow this work is now the easiest thing in the world. Like I still have to put in the grunt, is that even a phrase? I don't even know. I still have to put in the work. I don't know, like sometimes struggling is fun. 
it also helps that I have my little helpers watching over me and just taking care of me, so... This is the situation as we speak. These are all of the books that I recently received in my latest video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up in the corner. As you can see, I have a lot of new books, a lot of new unread books. And if you remember by my bookshelf tour, I usually just have the one bookshelf for my unread books, but um, <laughs> I think that's become a little bit impossible because all of these new books are not going to fit in this one shelf when I add it to all the other unread books that I own. So I think it's time to do some bookshelf reorganization because this is just not working for me. Like books are here, books are on the floor, and I just think that I can do a better job and yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. Here is the plan. I think, um, actually I don't think, and that's the problem, but here we go. This is my main game plan. I do have this one book of the month shelf, and even though I do like it, I think I can get away with putting these books up there. You know what I mean? Because those are my unread book of the month books. So right next to them, like on top of this shelf, instead of putting a random Polaroid camera, maybe I can put my red book of the month books. And I think that would be a better use of my space because then in this shelf, I can put, here we go. Listen, stay with me. <laughs> I'm gonna put my literary fiction books or whatever this shelf is and then in this shelf this sounds really complicated but I swear it's gonna make sense in this shelf I'm going to put the romance books that are up here because if you remember I'm not quite happy with the fact that my romance books are right under my horror manga shelf or just like my manga shelf in general so I'm going to be freeing up this shelf by putting it down there under my pink books, which I do think makes a little bit more sense than just randomly having it, you know, next to my horror manga. I feel like that's doable. I feel like that makes sense. I feel like that's what's going to make me the happiest at this moment. And it's definitely, oh my God, I just realized I'm going to have one free shelf, uh, but I do. <laughs> I do need the space for all the new manga that I'm getting because I am getting Chainsaw Man. I still haven't received the package, but I'm getting it any day now. So I do need more manga space. Is the answer just getting another shelf? <laughs> Literally, because I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let's just start taking some baby steps. Let's start by getting all of my book of the month books out of the way. I 
technically aren't book of the month, so I don't know where I'm gonna be putting these. But since I did DNF the series, I don't even know if I should keep these. Uh, I don't know. I'll keep it just in case. Where will I keep it? I don't know. I really want to put the books in the order that I read them, so hopefully I can remember. very first book of the month book and it was incredible um i think i gave it like four stars it was honestly extremely surprising so there we go they're sweet pretty sure that's this i feel like something doesn't something is wrong problem that I have with this shelf is that it started out as literary fiction but then somehow I just started putting books that didn't fit anywhere else so now it's just like a random bookshelf um, but yeah there's nothing I can do about that now <laughs> so I'm not going to overthink it and oh there's another book there we go The Maidens by Alex Michael Michaelades? 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 Ma Anyways, let's go. Yo, can you stop fall? You know what? Okay, fall. I don't care. You'll get your turn. The bell jar. I do them alphabetically so the the doesn't count so this is B and then this is this is gonna take some time because apparently now I want to organize them alphabetically for this shelf to have some semblance okay some semblance of order I'm trying out the alphabetical by title not by author so B C J K L M N O. That took me longer than it should. So this is how it looks now. If I were to do it alphabetically. And I don't know how I feel about this. I don't like it, actually. Um, so back to the drawing board. I do wanna... What if I just do like that before? You know what I mean? Cersei. Here.
Now we have to move my romance books. The first manga I'm going to be adding to this newly empty shelf is Junji Ito's Black Paradox. This won't be stay- oh, it's upside down, huh? There we go, Black Paradox. This definitely won't be staying on my unread shelf for a very long time because it is pretty short and I am very, very excited to read this one. Next up, we have this stunning omnibus volume of Attack on Titan. Oh my god, I can't wait to delve back into this world. I think I'm already getting into, you know, past the anime, so I'm going to be learning new things about this story, maybe meeting new characters, who knows? All I know is I am extremely excited to watch some people die, <laughs> see some people being eaten to death. It's gonna be incredible, so there we go. Still not sure what volume this is, but yeah. Attack and Titan. Then we have another Attack and Titan omnibus volume. This one is just as sexy as the other one. And oh, this is probably volume seven then, because this one has volumes 22, 23, 24. This has 19, 20, 21. So there we go. Oh my god. Yup, 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 yup. Oop. Got you. Love that. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember this episode. It was very traumatizing. It's going to be interesting to see the manga version of the episode that traumatized me for the rest of my life. Yay. <laughs> Do we have any other? No, we don't have any other unread manga except for the one that's you're literally standing on it right now. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to. Sorry about that, but you were standing on top of volume 18 of Jujutsu Kaisen So I had to get it um, Once again, why am I flipping? It's like I do this on purpose. It's like I want to be spoiled I didn't see anything. I swear. I swear. I didn't see anything. I okay. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I swear <sighs> There we go my very cute unread manga shelf. I might as well also put my unread classics. That could be something. So let's see, here we have Lolita. Okay, let's move these over here. No, no. Look at my beautiful Charles Dickens editions. Obsessed, they look so beautiful together. Oh, I'm so excited. And we have these other two as well. I'm going to try and organize the classics by the order that I got them in so I know which ones I've had for the longest and maybe that'll help me prioritize. Lolita is still definitely the longest book that I've owned that I still have not yet read, but I'm hoping that 2023 will change that so you won't be in this shelf for long, I promise. If you saw my latest video, then you know that I have two copies of the brothers Karamazov, Karamazov, Karamazov. So there we go. Hopefully I'll love this book. Otherwise, bye. Okay, one of them is no longer in perfect condition. Wow. Anyways. Oh, I almost forgot about Shakespeare's sonnets and a lover's complaint. I guess I'll put this here. I just realized this is upside down. Oh my god, okay. There we go. My newly furbished unread shelf. Full of classics and manga. 
Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot about Anna Karenina. Oof. Oh, of course, an Emily Dickinson. You know what they say, out of sight, out of mind. It's a beautiful day to have a beautiful day and that's exactly what I'm planning to do. Happy Sunday my dudes, my lovelies, my friends, my everythings. I did wake up pretty early considering how late I went to sleep last night because yesterday was my 24 hour readathon with my Patreons and it was so fun and so productive. There were so many of us that were finishing so many books and we even finished like some homework assignments. We did some PowerPoint presentations. It was just overall extremely fun and very productive. And I just felt like I was surrounded by the best people. That's how I managed to read five books. Yes, 
Thank you. I am so proud of myself. I'm even more proud to say that I finished the Cruel Prince trilogy. I started this video by saying I'm not really sure when I'm going to get to reread the Cruel Prince, like the first book. And now at the end of this vlog, like four to five days later, I've finished the entire trilogy in basically one sitting. And if that is not a power move, if that is not the most girl boss thing I've done in 2023, I don't know what is. So I'm really happy with that. And apart from the Cruel Prince trilogy, I also managed to read some two other great, fantastic, manga. I will not be going into detail because you'll obviously be seeing all of these books in my February wrap-up which is coming up anytime soon after this vlog goes up. So I just wanted to share the fact that my 24-hour readathon was very successful. I had so much fun and surprisingly I'm not sleep deprived at all which is a blessing. I just woke up and I was so happy to be alive <laughs> and that's precious. That's a wonderful feeling and I thought this was the best time to end this vlog because you know I've read so many books I feel like I've done so many things I rearranged my bookshelves and I am so happy with the way that they look now they do look a lot more cohesive now that I've rearranged where my romance shelf was I'm just overall really really happy and I hope the happiness that I'm feeling is being transmitted to you guys through this video because I don't know, it's just a really nice feeling and I hope you guys can feel it as well. Um, so if you're having a hard time, if you're having a hard day, I hope this video finds you at the best time, when you needed it the most. And just know that I'm here for you. If you ever need a buddy, if you ever need, you know, somebody to come to, to feel safe and feel warm and cozy and have a little bit of fun, you're always welcome here. So I hope you enjoy your stay, if you decide to stay. So there is one book that I said I was going to read on my 24 hour readathon, but I didn't get around to it because time ran out. And that is Yona of the Dawn volume 20, or is it volume 21? I think it's volume 21 because I've read volume 20. So I didn't actually get to finish or even start volume 21. And maybe that's what I'm going to do today because I finished all of my other reading goals. I finished my Patreon buddy read. I finished the Cruel Prince trilogy. And I think next week I'm going to be reading The Stolen Heir, which is the whole reason that I reread the Cruel Prince trilogy in the first place. Things are just lining up for me at, at the moment. And I am incredibly grateful. I'm so happy that I decided to vlog this week because this this week started off not great. I wasn't feeling my best. I was just a little bit like down in the dumps and I wasn't feeling it. You know, like life in general, we were just not vibing. But somewhere in the middle, somewhere between editing my Monte Cristo vlog and somewhere between doing this very impromptu 24 hour readathon with my Patreons and the reading sprints and just all of the support and love that I've received this week just really recharged my soul so to speak so i'm so happy that i got to vlog it because you basically saw me come back to life <laughs> and that's no small thing so i hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog i know it's been so so long since i last did one but hopefully this one was just as fun let me know in the comments below what other videos you would like to see from me i'm always aiming to please so do let me know down below once again, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell, leave a comment. It really helps my channel out and it really helps me out, so I would really appreciate that. If you want to, no pressure, my dude. I'm just saying you can live here rent-free. I also have a Patreon where we do a monthly book club, and as I've mentioned, we do some reading sprints, some random 24-hour readathons, and we generally just have a really good time. So if you're interested, you could join my army of premium simpers. The link is down below. It's up to you, my love. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, wow. Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.